Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. Um, the first thing I want to talk about uh, is a lot of, I won't say a whole lot, but I will say three, <laughs> three of y'all at least um, have asked me about, you know, my uh, uh, um, detox uh, regimen. Or what I have been doing, because a couple of y'all have noticed that I've lost a few pounds. Um, and actually, uh, I've been doing a detox called Tava Life. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of it, but it was um, it's almost like FUBU, for us, by us. Uh, but it is an absolutely wonderful product. It is a tea. And also, the CBD... Uh, uh, or a coffee. And what I wanted to share with you guys, <laughs> those of y'all that know, know I'm an avid coffee drinker. And uh, But however, um, with this Catawba, it's a um, CBD infused. And I really, really like it. It's a premium like supplement. And this is the coffee. I don't know if y'all can see that. This is Tava. Uh, and the um, that is the coffee. And there's a detox tea also. So you can get either or product. Oh, that's not working good there, folks. But this is a detox tea. And um, that's not showing up too good <laughs> But what I'm going to do is hopefully I'm going to be able to interview my distributor, um, have them come on the program and talk a little bit about why they decided to, uh, you know, in what made them interested in this product and, you know, how well it's done. But I tell you, it, it cleans you out like no other. And it's not the kind of clean out that, um, you know, is how, how do I explain it? Um, all at once, it's a real smooth type of, of action when you can feel your digestive tract actually, um, you know, extracting. And I think it's a, a wonderful, uh, a wonderful uh, detox program, a detox coffee and a detox tea. And like I said, I'm going to try to get the, uh, to get the, uh, 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 my distributor on here when they have a little time and maybe I can interview maybe I can also uh, give a, a discount a little off for those of y'all um, when you mention on uh, the mental house TV uh, that we can get maybe a little uh, discount going so we'll find out what's going on hopefully we'll do that soon but um, a lot of in the meantime this video um, is about the John Birch Society now, you might say, because a lot of y'all ain't never heard of the John Birch Society. Because I see now that they're trying to make their way back into things. And they were a racist group that was uh, actually, you know, put away out the pasture for a while. But I see they resurfacing. This was a, a racist organization that I remember. Well, I don't remember. Actually, I'm just going to give you the origin of it. They 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 like a f started in like 1958, okay, and it was founded in Appleton, Wisconsin, which is in Wisconsin, where I'm at. Um, and they so for those of you guys who don't know, Appleton, Wisconsin was a sundown town. What's a sundown town? You might ask. A sundown town is, they're all throughout America, you know, a lot of them in Mississippi, a lot of them all over the place, where they better not catch your a black or brown butt in their town after sundown, So, or they will kill you and lynch you. So that is the meaning of a sundown town. Appleton, Wisconsin was known for killing people for all of the... Hmm, a, a, a fairness that it comes try to come across as Wisconsin was one of these liberal states 
uh, back in the day, you know, where, and it used to be, I guess, part of the Underground Railroad, somebody said. I don't know. Because you could have fooled me because of that one slave. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Listen to this. This Birch Society is trying to make a comeback. And now they're making a comeback in our kids' schools. For all that nonsense that you're seeing, um, the anti-masker and the people. Uh huh. A lot of the Birch Society, because uh, they, they used to boost segregation. And so now they're back in the attack on these schools with the mask mandates. I'm, I'm telling you, it's just wash, rinse, repeat with these people. They are not original. They can't even come up with an original thought. Uh, it's just insane to me. On a Sunday, sun, on a Saturday um, in Knoxville, Tennessee, Tennessee Park, a man with a microphone told a crowd of parents to bar entry to their children's school. Starting Monday, Morning, and until this this is over, we need to bring Knox County Schools to a screeching halt, he said to a loud applause. He called on parents, students, and staff to participate. We have a moral obligation to our children's future to block the entrance to the school with your car. That's my suggestion. Block the entrance to the drive. Don't even let a bus in your uh, schools. If you can be told bold in your groups, then do it. The event was called Parents in the Park, and it was billed as a meetup for parents who objected to a mass mandate in Knox County schools. But the September 26th gathering was more than just concerned caregivers. It was organized and hosted by the John Birch Society, a far-right organization that found the peak of his power in the 1960s and 70s when it fought civil rights legislation, attracted segregationists, and believed that communists were poisoning Americans with fluoride before the rejection by mainstream conservatives sent it into a decline. I mean, see, you know, this is the mindset. Wash, rinse, repeat. But the organization may, has made efforts to rebuild since 2010, and in its opposition to COVID-19 restrictions, the once fringe group is hoping to tap into a popular right wing grievance. You know, some you know, <laughs> if you're wondering why I made reference to the star belly sneeches on my last uh, video, uh, that book. A lot of y'all hate Dr. Seuss. I thought Dr. Seuss, I mean, in terms of old white men writing books, I thought that a lot of his uh, uh, books had lessons in them. It depends on what you're looking for. Some people see the glass is half empty. Some see it is half full. Okay? And I thought that he did stories like, for instance, the star belly sneeches, where a man can drive into town and sell a group some stars. And then the people with the stars thought they was better than the sneeches without the stars. And so whenever he, he sold some more of them, they would take theirs off and he would go and tell them, hey, you know, having stars on your belly ain't cool. You know, um, this really foul now because somebody else got um, stars on theirs and whatever. And, and he would just go back and forth and rack up money because people would rather focus on why we are different as opposed to what makes us the same. As a human family. I mean you never see a bluebird and a robin. Fighting the way we do. And we all. They all species of birds. It's insane. When we look at the animals. And how they can cohabitate. You know. Um, unless the lion is hungry. You know. He's not really going to mess with nobody. He kills for survival. Okay. Um, a rhino can walk through the jungle. And see an elephant. Um, it's amazing to me that the European has a problem in his mind with e anything that's brown, anything that's black. And so when you start getting all these right wing grief, you know, grievance groups, it's really sad how, you know, 
they are so out of control that they think that a, a, a country can survive with this type of rhetoric. They really can. It just makes craziness out of the individual. You know, so if you call that surviving, I call it existing. You know, because you don't know the beauty of the rainbow. You know, you really don't. And I believe that God made us into uh, the universe a force, a spontaneous, con whatever, combustion. We all different colors, so we get to know one another. We're still in, in the human family. And so if I see a Mexican brother or a white, or, I'm a human. I'm not an animal. I'm not a donkey. I'm not a monkey. I'm in a group with the people that got your legs, eyes, and supposed to have an intelligence. I'm in that group, supposedly. But we don't act like it. We don't even act like we're the same type of species, which is supposed to be an elevated human beings, elevated animal. You know? And there's just some of us. I don't... You already know who they are. It's an elite group that thinks that it's better than everybody else and wants to start these type of events, um, Facebook events to get people to riled up into madness. You know, I mean, and it's really sad for our society because our children are watching this now. The kids can't even go to school and have their parents take them to school without these people chasing them down the road talking about, take your child's mask off. You're being, listen, why does it bother you? For me to put a mask on my child. You're just a freaking Karen out of control. And that is the energy that is in America all over the place. All over the place. It's like Donald Trump unleashed all the crazy. All the crazy is, is out of America. So it's out here live and well for us to see it. Um, I want to know what side you on. I, because you have to, if you have to pick a side, are you going to pick a side that says only this group of people get to be on top and the rest of y'all get shitted on? Or are you on a group of, of, of on that says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to evenly help everybody. And I know it's difficult, but. I think I can't remain in power this way. And my actions have showed me that I have to change some things. And those who are able to do that, the country, the society that is able to do that, is that is able to back up and redirect itself, is probably the country that will survive. Because now, we I mean, our babies are watching this. This this John Burr society, you know, it spent more than a half a century in militant opposition to liberal policies, often waging fights through the public schools. I mean, this is crazy. And this place was founded, like I said, right here in Wisconsin. It's it's a shame. You know, it fits the you know larger pattern of delegitimizing elected school board officials and public school teachers who are see, perceived to be anti-American. Anything to stir up the pot. And that's what happens when you let a person out the asylum and let them run the country. A game show host. I'm not saying Donald Trump created this. Please don't get me wrong. He don't got that much power. What I'm saying is he unleashed, he opened the door. Like like the keys to the color, he found the key and he opened up the colors. He opened it up for all the disgruntled um, people, particularly Europeans, that um, always need the proverbial other. Uh, Donald Trump made it easy for them to hate other people. So with that being said, because, you know, for the John Birch Society now to be making a comeback after the 70s people had squashed them down because they knew what they were about 
and y'all allowing them to come back and get behind some of these, um, infiltrate themselves. And, um, that's what we are. The good people, the light bearers, you still have to stand up and be counted. Because the world is real dark right now. So, you know, damn the John Birch Society and the horse it rode in on. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video.